if you're using this drug, it's like, wh why the fuck else would you be using it unless you were trying to mask use? What's up guys, Derek, moreplaysmoredates.com. Today we're going to be talking about Andre Onana. I don't know if that's how you say it, but that is my attempt. So he came out yesterday and talked about his uh, recent doping violation. So he was actually caught um, testing positive for Lasix. You know, that is the uh, brand name for the drug furosemide that more people are, uh, they're more familiar with the name Lasix. And, you know, especially in the Western side of the world where we know it as a uh, loop diuretic that is often used in bodybuilding and whatnot. But what a lot of people well, may or may not realize is how common it is used to cover up doping. So this is what we're going to be getting into and whether I think, you know, people think for some reason that in soccer or football that uh, um, there's no doping whatsoever. And it's just, oh, the best tests and blah, blah, blah. And there's no, there's nobody cheating. Nobody's cheating in it. So when this thing comes up, it's like, what is my take on it? I'll give you my take after I go through some of the uh, original details. So this is a uh, video by Sky Sports News. Andre Onana receives 12 month, 12 month suspension for doping. Hi, welcome back now to a big story in the Netherlands as Ajax goalkeeper Andre Onana has been handed a one year ban by UEFA for failing a drugs test. Now we can cross live to Dutch football expert Marcel van der Kran in Amsterdam. Marcel, great to see you. Tell us this was an out of competition test. Can you explain what's happened here? Well, the goalkeeper himself has explained in the last 10 minutes what has happened here. He says when he was uh, not with Ajax in a, in a game, um, he felt not so well at home and he took a paracetamol, he thought, from his wife's uh, medical uh, little unit in the bathroom. Okay, so there's already discrepancy here because that is not the drug that he mentioned in his Instagram post. He says, Hello everyone, I want to inform you that UEFA Appeals Body has imposed a 12-month ban on me without with immediate effect for having tested positive in an anti-doping control carried out in October 2020. I just want to clarify that everything was the result of a human mistake. I mistook a medicine containing a substance banned by WADA for a simple aspirin. So aspirin is not the same as paracetamol. Paracetamol is also known as acetaminophen, which you are probably more familiar with in uh, if you're on the Western side of the world as Tylenol. So no, they are not the same drug. And let's get back into it. Uh, this is the explanation the goalkeeper is giving. Uh, Edwin van der Sar, the CEO of Ajax and former Man United goalkeeper, he has explained, well, we never uh, tolerate anything for stimulant drugs. This is something we did not expect. And when we found out, we were hoping we would get away with it. But UEFA are not letting him get away with it at all. And 12 months is a severe blow for a goalkeeper who Ajax had put a price tag on for 50 million possibly going in the summer well they can get they can forget about this now yeah absolutely i was about to say he's an important player for ajax isn't he so i understand that they're planning to appeal this decision yes correct ajax are going to uh, cas uh, the tribunal um for sportsmen for very difficult cases they are hoping that it will uh, leave, leave them with a goalkeeper, maybe only three months, uh, maybe a suspension uh, for a short time. But it's a very difficult one. Not very often a cast can overturn things like this when it comes to stimulant drugs. Okay, so furosemide Lasix is not a stimulant whatsoever. It is a diuretic, as I mentioned at the beginning. So I'm not sure why this guy is way off the mark with what he's saying. He's picked the wrong drug as the mistaken drug that Andre, you know, accidentally took well, thinking that's what he was taking. It wasn't an, a it was an aspirin, not a paracetamol, uh, at least according to him, unless his stories change multiple times. Lasix is not a stimulant and it doesn't have any performance enhancing properties, but there are other reasons you would take it in a anti-doping context. Uh, it is actually pure, uh, puro semite is actually a, um, a, a stimulant which helps you to lose weight quickly is what no dude it's not 
It's a diuretic, which helps you lose water weight. It doesn't help you lose actual fat mass. It is something that is used either to acutely cut and make weight for a competition with eliminating water out of your body or masking drugs, which is one of the reasons why it is so often tested positive for in doping controls. This is something that is used to dilute the urine, to lower the burden or you know the concentrations um, per milliliter of actual metabolite hormones that may otherwise cause a um, threshold detection. So, you know, if you're trying to, if you're using this drug, it's like, wh why the fuck else would you be using it unless you were trying to mask use or you accidentally took it? So it's like, what is the likelihood that he accidentally took it is more so the question. And then what else, what could he be covering up is what I'm going to kind of get into after. One of the things which it does to people, and this is why there is a, um, there are many question marks around Onana at this moment. And yes, he is very important for them. He has been a key figure for the last couple of years. And um, this is why he has so much value transfer wise as well for the club. Okay, so that was Sky Sports News. So it's like, I don't, I don't really understand how a guy can come on who's a Dutch football expert and then claim pharmacology information as fact. Like if you don't know, just say you don't know, you know? Like it's not, if it's not your domain or something you've looked up, then like just fucking say, I don't know, but obviously he tested positive for something and um, this is what it was, you know? There's just like uh, tons of misinformation here. So reading further into uh, the post made by Andre on his Instagram, he says, um, was a simple aspirin. The medicine was prescribed to my girlfriend and I mistakenly took it for an aspirin because the packaging was almost identical, which I greatly regret. So he's claiming that his girlfriend was prescribed Lasix for, you know, edema. Like what exactly? Why would she have Lasix on hand? Not that I'm saying it's impossible to be prescribed Lasix. It's one of the most commonly prescribed drugs out there, but I'm just curious, like why? Why would that be in the house? And how is the packaging similar to an aspirin that is over the counter? If you have an aspirin versus a pharmaceutical bottle from a from an actual pharmacy, like they don't look similar whatsoever. Like I would like to, I, I would want to actually see what the bottle looks like because I don't think it would look similar whatsoever, to be honest. I have to say that I respect the UEFA appeals body, but I do not share their decision in this case. I consider it excessive and disproportionate as it has been acknowledged by UEFA that it was an unintentional mistake. You know, the thing here too is like with Lasix, it was detected in his um, urine analysis, but we don't actually know if he took oral or like an IV Lasix. Like for all we know, maybe his girlfriend had a prescription, but you could easily be, I don't know how easily, but it's not uncommon for guys in uh, who are doping to use IV Lasix, which has a faster clearance time in order to mask what they are using and perhaps disproportionately make the, uh, I don't know, like alter the urine profile that they would act have to randomly present. So hypothetically, if we had a T to E ratio of four to one, and maybe you've tested this out before and you know what your biological passport looks like pre and intra diuretic usage, maybe you could actually realize, oh, you know, I can actually get away with this much testosterone if I am use, using a diuretic concurrently versus if I'm not using it, I can't get away with falling within that ratio with a reasonable dose that's a performance enhancing amount of blank anabolic agent, you know, whatever it is. So like there are reasons that would, Im like it's very uncommon for guys to accidentally take a fucking diuretic, uh, just to say the least. So I have to say that I respect the UEFA appeals body, but I do not share their decision. Consider it excessive and disproportionate as it has been acknowledged by UEFA that it was an unintentional mistake. Everyone knows that I lead a very healthy life. No one knows anything about you, dude. And since I, well, you know, no one knows what you actually do in your fucking house, obviously. And since I started my sporting career, I have always been strongly against any use of doping and I condemn any unsportsmanlike conduct. I'm 24 years old and during the last few seasons, I've been lucky enough to play against, play almost every minute, both for Ajax and for my national team being named the best goalkeeper in Holland for the last four years and in Africa for the last three years. 
I just want to, I want to say that I have no need to resort to doping to further enhance my sporting career. I will appeal the decision before the court of arbitration for sport to prove my innocence and clear my name. I hope to be back on the pitch soon to do what I love and help my teammates. I would like to thank Ajax and the Cameroon national team for their support and confidence in me. Um, okay. So, you know, a lot of people ask me to cover this and this guy is a huge, huge star, I guess. And, um, this it's kind of interesting because the facts don't seem to line up where you get the news. So this article here said cl the club claiming their number one accidentally took medicine prescribed for his wife, um, revealed the Cameron international has been banned after it was the forbidden substance for Ferocemide in his urine followed following the test in uh, October 2020. But it says here, he wanted to take a, on the morning of October 30th, Onana was feeling unwell. He wanted to take a pill to ease the discomfort. It's like, how the fuck are you going to remember that, dude? On the morning of October 30th, I was kind of nauseous, so I took an aspirin. Unknowingly, however, he took Lassimec, a drug that his wife had previously been prescribed. Onana's confusion resulted in him mistakenly taking his wife's medicine, ultimately causing this measure to be taken by UEFA against the goalkeeper. Furthermore, the disciplinary body of the Football Association. So, Lassimec, um, I don't know if that is another, uh, if that's a brand name for Lasix in the Netherlands or something, but when you type it in on Google, you literally find nothing except for his stories about Lassimec. There's literally nothing on here whatsoever um i'm not doubting like it's kind of why would he be lying about the name of the medication um but i would like to see you know what the aspirin is actually named there what the bottle looks like how similar they really are because the likelihood that your over-the-counter medication is going to look the same or even similar to a prescription medication from the pharmacy highly unlikely in my opinion I mean, you actually, I wanted to see if there was potential that maybe aspirin was a, you know, a prescribed drug in where he lives. Cause obviously in certain parts of Europe or, you know, Australia, certain things are banned that aren't banned here, you know, as well as even adjacent countries, you might have something that is over the counter. You can literally buy on Amazon as a fucking dietary supplement. And then in another country, literally right beside it you need a doctor's prescription in order to obtain it. And it's illegal to sell even in an over the counter um, drug context. So I want to look it up and I found this article, how Europe's pharmacy lobby wants us to keep paying too much for aspirin. And I was looking through it and it sounds like it is indeed pretty much over the counter. And when you sort by Netherlands, the United Kingdom is not the only European country allow grocery stores to sell low risk drugs. The Netherlands recently liberalized sales for certain non-prescription drugs. Denmark and Sweden have similar rules allowing consumer more choice. So when I click on that link, we have uh, ukpracticelaw.com and uh, let's see if aspirin is in here. Okay, well, I can't seem to find if aspirin's over the counter in the Netherlands, and I'm assuming it doesn't look anything like pharmaceutical prescribed furosemide, but you know, I could be wrong on that. But at the end of the day, you know, when you look at some of the literature on um, doping in sport, what is one of the most commonly detected compounds by WADA? Look at, you know, 2003 up to 2008. Look at the increase, the trending increase in percentage of all positive samples most common drug detected occurrences, furosemide, 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 and furosemide, hydrochlorothiazide, and furosemide being second in 2008. It's like almost 10% of doping violations are diuretic detection. So why is it so common that you're finding diuretics? Is it all guys that are accidentally taking their girlfriend's medications? No. However, you have to understand too, with random out of competition testing, is it, um, so, like typically you would only use bioidentical compounds and you would not be on something perpetually year round. That's an obvious synthetic agent that is going to pop on a drug test. Like if you were actually using Lasix, you would probably be pretty worried about it popping up in your urine if you ended up getting randomly drug tested. So the likelihood would be higher that you would be using bioidentical compounds at lower dosages and micro dosing rather than using, you know, maybe a more aggressive protocol and hoping that the diuretic gets out of your system fast enough for, you know, if you got randomly tested out of competition, trying to mask it, you know, cause it's not like these, uh, the diuretics are, you know, arguably more detectable 
than some of the bioidentical compounds themselves. So actually very much so. That's why they get to have positive tests so often for this shit. So, you know, on the one hand, it makes me think, obviously he was trying to cheat because this is something that is extremely common. And of course they always have an excuse and you can actually manipulate your urine analysis to such an extent that you can actually get away with more aggressive doping protocols in your given sport if you're able to manipulate that um, the urine volume and the actual distribution of the metabolites and whatnot and excretion rates and whatnot you know there could have been other things he was doing too but just for the sake of simplicity in this video that's a very common practice but then on the other side of the equation would you really be using a compound perpetually year-round like that typically most people who are using diuretics it would be for plan tests to get this shit um it would not be you know you know you can test positive for this like no one's dumb enough i would think to be using lasix on a perpetual basis year round knowing the detection time is within a reasonable enough window that if somebody randomly shows up at your door you can't just hide under your fucking bed and wait it out like when you get tested you're going to have some of this in your system unless you um know that they're coming to test you you know you like you know, fucking hide and wait it out. And then like a day later you do the test and you know it's out of your system or not. And I'm not saying that doesn't happen, but in general, if you get randomly tested and you're like forced to on the spot, get a test done, you would probably not be using a masking agent because you know the masking agents have reasonable detection times. Maybe he has bad, you know, advisements on his side. Somebody that is trying to improve his likelihood of passing tests and thinks that using a diuretic on a perpetual basis is a safe enough mitigation strategy and he can get away with a more aggressive uh you know whatever kind of regimen he's using or you know it's not impossible that it was an accident ultimately it's you know your responsibility to if, if you're getting paid 50 million dollars or whatever it is like read the fucking labels dude and like if if i had a girlfriend who had lasix in the fucking house i'd be like toss it out like, you know like after you're done with it if you're not still using it or put it in a separate area of the house, like locked up or some shit. Like don't mix it up with my stuff so I accidentally grab it. So I would think any logical athlete would think put in some sort of prevention strategy to prevent you from screwing up. And like I get that, you know, common everyday shit. Maybe you overlook it. Maybe you take a, uh, you know, you reach into the closet and you grab a fucking aspirin. It turns out to be like six because they look so similar. Let me know what you think in the comments down below. Do you think it was an accident? You think he was uh, intentionally doing it? This is just, uh, you know, an excuse. If you have a comparison of the aspirin in the Netherlands versus Lasix or the actual, uh, the version of Lasix or the brand that they mentioned, which is a uh, Lassimec, which I couldn't find anywhere on Google. Um, you know, post it up there, see a pic of it, and see if it actually you know holds up to scrutiny. If the bottles actually look similar whatsoever. But yeah, that is uh, that is uh, my stance. So take from that what you will. Thank you guys for watching. Like, subscribe, check out my blog, moreplates.com. Follow me on Instagram at moreplates underscore more dates, Facebook, Snapchat, Bitchu, Twitter, TikTok, Apple Podcasts. If you want to support the channel, you can check out anything I'm associated with in the video description below. My TRT clinic. It's all telemedicine from the comfort of your own home. Gorilla Mind, Nootropic Formulas, Gorilla Mode, pre-workout formulas that design myself from scratch, my recommended lab test panels for diagnostics, and anything else I'm associated with, it's all in the video description below. Thank you guys for watching. Talk to you soon.